we're in chapter four, which brings us into the subject of texting in today's society. And overall, I think that most of us believe that texting is just a new way of communicating. And it really doesn't have much to do with our writing skills whatsoever. It's just something we do. And it's very convenient. I mean, we text somebody because we're going to be a little late here or whatever. Um, and, you know, I was somewhat surprised as I was doing the research because, unfortunately, that is not what the facts of the situation is at all. And um, now that the science has been around us long enough, we've really had a chance to go in and study it. And what you're going to find here, and I'll move this out of the way, is does texting harm, you know, a student's writing skills? And, you know, that would be hard for me to think that texting would cause somebody to become less in their writing. But it's very true. You can see here where we can see from this one poll here, this survey, that the yeses are significantly greater. And this was taken out of a survey of quite a few people. And let me see if I can find, um, yeah, here we go. This is the survey that was done here. And essentially, they took 2,840 people and found that 56% of them believe that texting actually harmed the student skills. And I, I, where that's coming from is, you know, in texting, how we use a U as a single character instead of Y-O-U. And we've learned how to do all these shortcuts and all these little act and acronyms and everything else. And what it's done is it's caused us, on, from that perspective, to decrease our language skills. And then on top of it, what it's done is caused us to, to shorten everything up to where we very rarely communicate much of anything other than, yes, I'll be five minutes late and you figure the rest out. So really texting is not such a, a great skill for us to try and use as a format that we would use in the future for long-term relationships. And that's not to say don't use texting. It's just to say don't get so wrapped up into it that you think you can replace emails with texting. And as we keep moving on, we, we can kind of see as project engineers, we need to look at this subject with more of an analytical approach and recognize how this technology can really assist us in our business and then avoid the drawbacks of using text as a communication format. So we know that we know where we're at. And so how can we make it our best possible, use it the best way possible and then not get hung up and the downside of it. And what we've seen with the current data is that texting is very helpful in keeping your daily schedule organized. And by being able to quickly adjust your daily activities through texting, you save a lot of time. If you're going to be five minutes late to a meeting, you can drop a real quick note as you're driving down the road, bingo. And I'm not to say you should drive down the road in text, but but we all do things like that. But nonetheless, you use it for what it is good for and don't use it for the things it's not. And so we can really manage our calendars is what I see as a big um, increase for us. And there's a few other functions. If, if we need an update on something or whatever, we can get that very quickly before we step into a meeting. And we can also see that texting can be quite useful in confirming events that have occurred. And that was just what I was saying. Um, you know, we want to keep abreast of the status of our jobs. So for me to text somebody and have them, or for them to text me once a day or twice a day and say, yeah, I got all that stuff done on the fourth floor. Everything's good. We're moving on to the fifth. Those are good texts. Those are texts that I don't have to respond to that give me more information as to the status of the project and are not wasting my time or their time. And another great feature of texting is that you can casually ask someone as to their progress on a given task. 
without making it a big deal. It's not a big issue of, of concern or anything. It's kind of like, hey, Nancy, did you get a chance to get all of those um, submittals out yesterday or not? You know, and you're not placing any blame. You're just trying to figure out, did they get out or not? And, um, and if we look at the positive aspects of texting, we can establish a basic rule that works well with this medium. And, you know, we had the two-minute rule in emails. And in a way, a two-minute rule on texting is not a bad way to go. You may want to expand it to a three- or four-minute uh, rule. But the point is, don't sit there and try and write uh, a text that's going to take you ten minutes to write it. Um, because then it's too complicated of a text for you to really be able to format it in a way that's professional as it is. So really you can kind of um, do this in-house maxim and you, you kind of need to learn what that needs to be for yourself and add it into your everyday life. But what is that, that period? If I know I need to, I can do it in two minutes or less, in bingo, I've resolved the issues, I'll respond to the text. Otherwise, uh, it's starting to waste my time and I'm losing in the process of it. So that kind of takes us through the concept of texting. It's a definite tool that is of, of use to us. It's something we should use, but it's something that we should also understand the, the areas in which we should use it in the areas in which it's just costing us time and money. So we'll go ahead from there and move into chapter five.